painting tutorial and now it's time to paint the Zoot, uh, the last miniature from the Blackstone Fortress. I'm going to paint him in the classical green colors, uh, black armor with reds and, and I will do the belly in a much uh, lighter color. So I want to start with the belly because it's the part that we have less access. Uh, the, the miniatures have been primed with um, what's called the color Wraithbone. Okay, the Wraith, I don't find no the, here. This color, okay, Wraithbone, but in spray, okay? I don't like, I don't like to go for a super heavy um, coats, so you can see that uh, I like, uh, it's quite, not super heavy, I like to, to prime uh, quite uh, lightly. Uh, we are going to start applying first, uh, I will start with contrast paints to speed up the first steps and then later on we are going to go for highlights and uh, we are going to go in more detail. We are going to start with Adaras Dunes, so I will do the belly in a yellowish uh, color and later on we are going to do maybe a, um, a glaze on green to unify with the green of the back. But I go for a yellowish aqua color at the belly Okay, and we are going to do this part here, right? These things that you see there. I will go very light, so I really want to avoid that the paint is accumulating anywhere. And the, the I will only do the belly, the, the, the legs I will keep it in green. Okay, I will not go on the on the I will not go on the legs at all. Okay, sometimes the legs can go in the same color as the belly. In that case, no, I just go on the belly. Uh, sorry that this is not, uh, maybe you don't want to, this miniature can be detached from the base, I think. I did not glue it, okay. So it's going to be much easier to do the belly. This way, uh, and you can see how I'm doing the base. Okay, so this is the, the, the idea for the base. So I will remove it. I will. It's going to make it easier for the base and for the to do the bottom part of the. So this is just one of the advantages of doing it that way. You can see, and then on the tail we do just the bottom of the tail. Uh, you can see that the color is a little bit darker, and it's because I prime it uh, on the base and the primer did not when. Uh, that much into the belly, but there is enough primer, so there is, this is not a problem. And uh, as this will be a shaded part, because at the end this will go um, on the base uh, shaded, I will keep it like that. Okay. So I do this part with Agarus Dunes. You can see how nice it looks like. I really like Agarus Dunes; is a great color. Try not to load too much the brush and uh, spread the paint nicely so in that way you really will make work very nicely how, how it's looking. Uh, I consider, I, I apply the same logic as when I'm doing um, contrast paints as when I'm doing um, uh, how it's called this, uh, washes, okay? I put it back to the base now, okay? And now we can take a green color and we can do the other part of the skin. I will go for quite a bright color. I will start with Warpstone and I will work the shading by adding highlights. Okay? So now we are going to look very green, very, maybe very warpy, okay, in a way very bright but later on we are going to do a wash with a greenish green and will help to uh, make uh, a, to mood uh, to yeah to saturate a little, a little bit the color okay but i prefer to start with a very bright green to have a good uh, a good vision now of what i'm doing i will try to go to avoid to go onto the armor and as i said um Although the, the the contrast paints sometimes are a little bit more difficult to control, try to avoid, uh, try to focus on applying it on the parts where you want it really to have. Okay, try to avoid to go out of the areas where you need the green. You can make mistakes. If you do a mistake, I will um, 
you always can correct later on but uh, try to avoid for, for example here I just did a mistake uh, okay because I confused a, a wrinkle of the skin with uh, the border of the armor so I mean the other way around the border of the armor I thought that was but this part can be a little bit tricky because it's a little bit hidden and again when we go to the legs we can detach again the miniature from the base if it's needed okay and that once with the work is finished I'm going to proceed to glue it on the base so I will do all the rest of the skin as you can see there is not much uh, to explain here and I'm back for the next step okay this how looks like once we have done uh, uh, the green um, we have applied the contrast green and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean up where I have made uh, where the green went over the plus I want to apply now uh, the black contours. Okay, I want to be sure that they have a good a good limitation, a good a good um, color separation. So to do that, I go back with breathstone, breathbone, sorry, and I will clean up all the piece, uh, pieces where I have made a mistake, and I went over. This is to help. So I want to apply the, I like a lot the Templar, Black Templar Black. I want to apply Black Templar Guard on the, on the armor now. And before doing that, I will go with Brave Bone and clean up all the mistakes I done. Okay? So I do that and I come back for the next step. Okay, after cleaning, I'm going to use now uh, Black Templar. And I'm going to put this on all the armor plates, all the armor parts. Okay? So let's take, we have to be careful, the only part I will not cover, uh, I will cover as well the gun and I will, we have to be careful not to go into the green, but we also need to avoid that we have any white visible except the claws or the uh, nails of, I don't know how it's called this, uh, of on the legs, okay? But we are going to apply that. Even the part that I want to do right later on, I will put this and then I come back for the next step. And here I will make a review. By any, you make a mistake, you go too much into the green, you come with the brush, you clean up the brush and you. Put. Anyway, the paint will trend to go to the recesses. So it's normal that the recesses between the armor and the skin we are going to have a natural black line okay so i'm going to apply this first one layer i check who looks like and maybe a second layer later on uh, but uh, sometimes in one with one layer is enough with a black templar so i do that and i come back once the first layer is applied okay once uh, we have applied the black you can see uh, we have a nice um, base coloring, uh, coloring, um, coloring. Okay, and next step, I'm going to do the um, nails. Okay, so to do the nails again, I remove it from the base. It's a little bit tricky this time. We are going to work all the bottom, and then uh, I will go back. So I'm going to apply now a darker color. I'm going to apply a Bentley brown on the nails. Okay, I have it already here in my wet palette and we are going to apply this. It's a darker bone color. So uh, beige color, I want to say not bone. Okay, but we'll we'll it's going to be an in, uh, interesting one to do this. Okay. So I will paint all this nails and I'm back uh, for the next step. By the way, uh, on the black I just did one layer. So this was how it's looking like after one layer of black, okay? Uh, for the moment it's good enough and now I will do the nails. I want to do first the part I don't need to detach the miniature from the base anymore. And once this is done I will start doing the details and the other parts of where I need to do something like that. So I do that and I'm back for the next step. Okay, while the nails are drying, 
Now I'm going to do a wash of camo shade, okay, on the belly of on the, on the bone belly, okay. As I said, I wanted to go for the green um, tone, tone at the end. So we are going to do this, um, no, this um, camo color. That is a very desaturated one. I'm going to apply it first here on the belly. And later on we are going to apply it all over the body, okay? But I, I do it by parts so I can handle the miniature easily. Okay. You can see this will give this greenish color. Very desaturated green. Okay, that will have a nice contrast with the rest of the green that will, will be more saturated color. This will increase more and more the contrast we already have there. Okay. And now I'm going to do the same on the rest. So you can see this will not modify too much the green we already did. It will give a darker color. So the impact of this green, of this wash on the green is not going to be that impactful. But anyway, I like to do it all over the parts. So, and be careful on the nails we just did. I want to avoid to go into the nails now, okay? So I do that on all the parts. And I'm back once the wash half dry. Okay, you have to be careful here how you handle the miniature. More likely, I will do first the legs, and then I will put it back to the base and do the rest. Okay, the only tricky one is you see this is a nail that goes to the attachment on, on the base at the same time. So, say it. I will do that on the whole miniature, and I'm back for the next step. Okay, this hole looks like. Uh, on the black, I also uh, applied the wash, the green wash. So this way the black have a green shade. And now I'm going to apply uh, Agath Air Shade. Uh, no, Agath Air Shade, sorry. I will better use uh, one of the contrast paints because I want heavier coloration. So I will use a Gorgunta uh, on the nails, okay? If you don't have Gorgunta, you always can use Agath Air Shade. So I'm going to do that on the nails. Okay. To give this. darker coloration okay so I do I repeat on the other nails and I'm back okay this is how it looks like now okay quite dark but we are going to work to make it uh, lighter later on but now I'm going to work a little bit more on the belly I'm going to use iron arc uh, skin any very light the saturated green can do the work okay I'm going to put some on my white palette this is some background noise of my kids playing in the, ground, in the garden. Okay. And now I will use quite a detail brush and we are going to do the same in the next. Okay, starting with the top, I'm going to do like that. Repeat it here for you. Okay, I'm going to do like that on all this type of yeah, on, I don't know exoskeleton that he has here at the belly or something like that. Okay. Okay, 
I do that for the rest of the belly and I'm back for the next step. Okay, we have done all the highlights. Okay, this is how it looks like now. It's a little bit too much. So now we are going to use um, a contrast paint as a glaze. So I'm going to use the contrast grid camo and I'm going to apply this on the miniature. Okay, so we are going to take a big brush and I'm going to apply this here. Okay. And this will help to make the colors, the, 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 the light parts less contrasting. Okay, it will melt all the colors more together. Okay, I'm going to apply this, you can see here. And then I will wait at this device before doing the next step. Okay, this is how it looks like once uh, we have the, the, the contrast has arrived. Okay, you see that everything is much more integrated. And now I'm going to use as a messy desert on the nails. Okay, <coughs> so we are going to apply this very similar way how we have done the the, the scales or the plates in uh, at the valley of the of the zone so zold okay we are going to take a steam brush sorry for my dog and we are going to do very thin lines. We are going to leave the darker brown as still lines, okay? Take a little bit more water. And I'm going to do this on all the nails. Okay, the same on all the different nails. Okay, and once this is done, well, let's do that, and then I will I will come for the next step. Okay, next step, I'm going to use a snake bite leather, and I'm going to apply this at the bottom of the nails, something like that. We are going to do all the different nails. As you can see, I try not to put too much.
Okay, so I will keep doing that on all the different names, on all the, on all the posts, and I'm back for the next step. Okay, this whole day look like once we have the snipe by lighter has dry, okay? And one thing we can do now is to we can do two things to be fair. First I'm going to take even a darker brown. I'm going to take no gorgunta, I'm going to take this one. The Zygor brown, and we are going to put it this really at the bottom of the nail, so making even a darker uh, part at the bottom bottom. Okay, and um, in some of the short nails can be a little bit challenging. These ones, I want to really put this at the bottom. And again, I try to spread it a little bit. And the very short nail is going to be mainly almost edge highlight. Okay, and this part, the parts of the, at the, here, I will just apply it. Okay, but this is not, you, this one is visible, okay. This is part that is annoying a little bit because it's a little bit visible, so I will leave it like that. Not, it's not that much visible because once it's on the base, it's not easy to look the bottom of the miniature. The other parts rest on the ground, so they're going not to be that visible. But these ones, I just want to apply a little bit of this one. You can see the contrast paint when you apply little quantities like this; they dry quite fast as well. Okay. These ones you can you don't need to do the bottom. I just want to be sure that the very bottom is darker. Okay, maybe this one I did a little bit too much, but it's not a problem. Okay, now we have that. And I'm, take, I'm going to take now. I uh, will change my brush and I will change to a. a, a I will use now Seraphine Sepia and we are going to put it all over the, the glue. Okay, and it's mainly to help to make the yellow a little bit more brown. Okay, I wanted to apply more like a filter of color. You can see. You can even do when you do nails. You can even give a satin fin uh, finishing at the end because the nails are a little bit satinated. Are not really matte, matte. If you look your nails as well, they are a little bit satinated. But also, if you look the nails of a dog or of a cat, you will be. They are not really um, fully matte, right? So here we go. Put this and now we can put the monster or the monster the zoot back to the base okay it's quite a fast step okay we'll put it now back to the base and then, and then come back so now that it's back to the base i'm going to start applying some metallics i want to do for a bright metallic and i'm using this one this is from miniature paints non-toxic uh, and it's I don't know, I'm using this one, I'm very happy, it looks very like like the old um, Mitty Silver. This is from Gamecraft Raging Works, CBU Road. So this is a, a paint that I'm using a lot, it's 92 silver. You can see how nice it looks like, okay, and you will see the results when I start applying this on the, in the middle. It reminds me so much Mitty Silver that I'm very, very happy on the results that they are give this is giving to me. So I'm going to do this type of buttons or things that we have here. And you can see that it gives a very nice finishing. Okay. So I'm going to do all these things. All of the parts they were metallic. And to be fair, this was a pretty cheap paint. 
I'm not. Uh, I would say in terms of metallics, I'm. I'm not super fan of some of the Games Workshop paints. I, I like a lot the Iron Breaker, but I don't like to match the. What's called the. The Stone Horse Silver and so on, and the wrong fan still. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to play this metallic, but you can use if you want iron breaker. Any silver will do the work here, okay? So I'm going to do that and I'm back for the next step. Okay. This is how it looks like when we have applied the metallics. Okay, and the next step I'm going to do is I'm going to apply cone red uh, in the part where I want to have the red glow or the red vessels. Okay, for example, this one here. Okay, this is going to be just the base color to later on do all the effects. I'm just trying to put now all the base colors, all the remaining base colors, so I can see how all the colors will combine, how this will look like and from there we are going to start doing the details and highlight starting with the face maybe so I do that and I come back for the next step so we have done now the red parts you can see here how they look like and now I'm going to use Bahar Blue the part where I will do like I will do sensation of a transparent tube or something like that. Okay, just for me to mark uh, how I will do this later on. So I apply. I'm taking Bahar Blue and applying on some of the tubes. I, I'm going to go here a little bit different than the scheme of the uh, what's it, the color scheme official from Ridge Workshop. And I will try to do something different in that case. Okay, so I applied this one here. I will do as well this is, as again workshop like a vessel of glass or something like that. So all where to stop where stop of course this can not be glass if not this can be broken in combat but can be type of a super hardened transparent product or something like that. Okay. You never know, can be also like a, a super hard plastic. So I'm doing that and I'm back once this is done. Okay, next step, I'm going to use Glyph Charger on uh, the metallics. Okay, so I'm going to come in here. I'm going to apply Glyph Charger on the metallics. This will give a nice bluish shade that will help to give the sensation of steel. Okay, or type of steel like material. So I'm going to apply this on all the parts where I applied first the metallic. And then as usual I will need to wait at this device before doing a further step as each time I apply a uh, contrast. Okay? So I do that and I come back for the next step. Okay, next step I'm going to apply a wash of noon oil over the red and over the black again and as well the silver. So I want to darken everything a little bit more. On the silver it will not be too heavy, but on the on the black parts I will try to go a little bit heavier, okay? And I try to avoid what I did here to go over the green. Okay, so here we go. And I will do the wash. So, again, this wash is just a way for me to make it even darker. The what we have done with uh, the temple guard and then the green wash. Here we have to be careful not to go into the blue. 
So you can go do this before doing the blue. Maybe it's easier. I just decided to do it later on. So I do that and I come back uh, once this has dry. Okay, this is how it looks like once the wash. It's not fully dry, but it's uh, there is still some pockets. But this is how it looks like now. And I will finalize here the part one on the painting tutorial of the Zoot. I will do a second part where I will keep painting and I will keep the paint job on him. Okay, it's a fine miniature to paint. You can see here one side, the other side. I hope you're enjoying um, with this tutorial as much as I'm enjoying painting this miniature. And yeah, and just keep on if you want to see how this evolves and see the final result. I guess in the second part I will be able to finalize it. So that's all for now. As usual, thanks a lot for watching and see you then later. Bye.